today I will be giving you my top three secondary service connected conditions. So stand by. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be giving you my top three secondary service connected conditions. Now, these are just my opinion of the top three service connected conditions. I think that you could win, okay? Uh, especially if you have a private examiner completing your DBQ and Nexus statement. And as I stated in some of my earlier videos, if you're a veteran and you don't have a private doctor to complete that DBQ, reach out, schedule a consultation on my website, which you can find in the description section below, and we can talk through it and give you some options, okay? So, that being said, what are my top three secondary service-connected conditions? But before I give them to you, we have to understand one thing. What is a service-connected condition? Now, I'll give you a quick example. A veteran service-connected for the right knee, and that right knee is really bad off, and the, uh, the veteran needs a right knee replacement, but they may be putting it off and putting it off, and the veteran is walking, and his right knee gives out, he or she falls, they shift their body weight over to the left knee, and they break their kneecap, for example, okay? Now, they can claim that left knee, broken kneecap, secondary to that service-connected right knee. Now, that's just one example. There are many out there, all right? I'll link a video that I did where I talked about uh, obtaining service connection on a secondary condition without a nexus statement. Okay, so I'll link that video at the end of this uh, at the end of this video. All right, so this video wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't have at least one slide for you. So today I only have one slide, and I'm going to give you uh, the VA's definition on how you can get service connected on a secondary basis. Okay, so slide number one. Here in slide number one, uh, this is M21. And again, whenever I'm sharing an M21 or 38 CFR, go out and continue to do your research, okay? Because these things change or they could change at different times, all right? So establishing causation for secondary SC. A lot of veterans don't know what SC is. I'm about to tell you. Service connection. That's what that means, all right? So service connection on a secondary basis requires a showing of causation. A showing of causation requires that the secondary disability be shown to be approximately due to or the result of a service-connected condition. To establish causation, the primary disability need not be service-connected or even diagnosed at the time of the secondary condition is incurred. Tricky, right? Even when I read it, when I was preparing for this video, I had to read it twice. But one thing that I think that the VA does very well is in a situation like this where when they're explaining something and it could be some confusion, they give an example, okay? So in this example, it says, <clears throat> excuse me, service connection was granted for a back disability with radiculopathy, effective in 2015. Credible evidence that showed that the veteran had a 20-year history of back pain and progressively worsening radiculopathy dating back to roughly 2001. The formal diagnosis of radiculopathy was not made until 2010. Now, I'm not going to read the remainder of this example, but at the bottom, it gives you the result. Okay, so they go through a couple paragraphs of the example, and then they give you a result. It states as the medical opinion establishes causation for the rotator cuff tear in the shoulder due to radiculopathy, the requirements of service for service connected service connection on a secondary basis are satisfied. Now, I'm not a medical professional. I don't give, I don't diagnose people, none of that. I know what diagnoses are and what they mean. So when they say radiculopathy, it's also known as peripheral neuropathy. Now you can have radiculopathy in the lower extremities, which will affect two areas, the femoral nerve and or uh, the sciatic nerve, 
Normally you see it, I've, well, I've seen it with the sciatic nerve, all right? Now, radiculopathy in the upper extremities is the median nerve, okay? And for those of you who may not know, a lot of veterans are service-connected for the neck or maybe a, a possible upper back condition, that nerve runs from the neck down through the shoulders, always down, all the way down to the wrist. And when it's in the wrist, it's known as corporal tunnel, all right? So radiculopathy of the lower extremities and peripheral neuropathy of the upper extremities. Now, my three secondary, top three secondary service-connected conditions, okay? Number one, sleep apnea secondary to PTSD. I interviewed a medical professional last year, I want to say maybe November, December, and I always wanted to know, is there a link between sleep apnea and PTSD and, or any other mental condition, major depressive disorder, anxiety, or whatever? And the answer was yes. And then I went out and I Googled it and I found some medical studies linking the two. Now, 10 times out of 10, you file that claim without a DBQ and you go to a third party VA CMP examiner, guess what? More than likely they're gonna deny that claim. At least that's what I've been seeing over the past few years. Even when I adjudicated claims back when I was a rating specialist, I think I only seen a doctor one time that says, yes, sleep apnea is secondary to PTSD, okay? Now, with that being said, like I stated, if you have your private doctor, okay, do it, the chances of it are being service connected because they're going to take the time to go out, look at medical literature, look at all the evidence and make that determination because there is medical literature out there that has been provided by medical professionals saying that uh, sleep apnea uh, can be caused by PTSD, depression, and or some other uh, mental conditions. Now, again, again, I am not a medical professional and I'm not providing the medical advice, but I do know how to go out there and do the research and look up certain things and see if there is a connection, okay? Number two, migraines secondary to tinnitus. So for those of you who don't know tinnitus, ring it in the ears. There is a connection. I've asked several medical professionals, and they say, yes, there, there, there is a connection. And then I was like, wow, let me go out there and find some more medical, medical literature on that. And I did. And there is. You have to go out and find it. Now, a lot of VA CMP examiners will say no. I've seen some that said yes, you know, more than ones that said sleep apnea is secondary to a mental condition. But I always tell veterans, hey, why not be proactive and just – Go out there and just find a link. It's there, okay? Now, number three, radiculopathy of the lower extremities and radiculopathy of the upper extremities secondary to the neck, lower extremities secondary to the back. Now, radiculopathy of the lower extremities. Let me explain that because I didn't explain it earlier. What are some of the things that you may have, symptoms you may have had uh, that affected your sciatic or femoral nerve. Now, one that I can think of is, let's just say you're sitting down uh, below parallel, you know, using the restroom, and you're sitting there for a long period of time, and you stand up, and you're like, oh, man, I can't walk because my foot is numb. Well, you compress that sciatic nerve, all right? Or if you're laying in the bed on your side, and your lower extremity, like, you know, maybe from your knee down, goes numb, you know, you know, you compress that nerve. May have shooting pain, dull pain, constant pain. That's that nerve. All right. The upper extremity, as I stated earlier, the median nerve. And if it's in your lower extremities down by your wrist, then that's corporal tunnel. All right. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the, some of the uh, other conditions. Oh, now, just as a bonus, I've also seen veterans claim lower back pain secondary to their service-connected knees and or their ankles. Also to include if they have severe flat feet. I've seen that as well because, you know, as you get older, if you got severe flat feet, 
You're wearing different shoes. You can't walk as far without having some type of pain. And then that pain is going to start coming up to your ankles, your knees, and then eventually going to have that low back pain. And you may be that gentleman in the mall with uh, their significant other or their wife sitting out in front of the store while your wife is in there shopping because now that pain has risen from your ankles, your feet up to your lower back. Okay. So those are the top three. And again, most VA CMP examiners, third party examiners, they don't make that link. I've seen majority of them make that link that are non VA providers. And I've seen the medical literature that they went out there to verify to state that there is a link. Okay. So again, if you're a veteran, you're looking to get a DBQ and a nexus statement completed, schedule a free consultation with me and we can talk about uh, some of your options, especially if you have your VA claims folder. Okay. So with that being said, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and don't forget to share this video with your fellow veterans. Thank you.